Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. And also welcome back to my Linux Crash Course series. In this series, I'll teach you a valuable Linux related concept in every video, and you can watch these videos in pretty much any order. In today's episode, what we're going to do is learn the kill command. And while that sounds a bit violent, it's really not. It's a very useful command. And what I'm going to do is teach you everything you need to know to use this command in today's video. What most people primarily use the kill command for is killing processes, but that's not really all it's able to do. Sure, I'm going to show you how to terminate processes later in the video, but it's important to understand that there's more to the kill command than just that. But the description of the kill command is a lot more fun when it's being explained by a Klingon. So I asked ChatGPT to explain the kill command as if it's being explained by a Klingon, and this is what it came up with. So if you want a good laugh, just pause the video and give it a read. Now, most people use the kill command to terminate misbehaving processes. But the actual reason for the kill command, its actual use case, is to send a signal to a process. A signal essentially causes a process to do something, maybe reload its configuration file, or just completely close. But before I get to that, I just wanted to let you guys know that I have two brand new courses available over on Udemy. First, if you're in the process of learning Linux for the very first time, you should definitely check out my Linux Essentials course. Not only will this course teach you everything you need to know to get started and learn the basics of Linux, it's also going to help you get certified and earn your Linux Essentials credential through LPI. And the Linux Professional Institute is the world's largest Linux and open source focused vendor neutral certification body. So by earning certifications through LPI, your credentials will be recognized around the world. But even if you don't have any interest in getting certified, this course is still a great fit for those of you that are getting started with Linux because it'll teach you all the basics. Also, I recently released an Ansible course as well, which will teach you everything you need to know to get up and running with Ansible. Ansible is one of, if not the most popular configuration and automation platforms in the Linux ecosystem, so it's definitely something that you need to learn. Ansible is a powerful and easy to learn platform that'll enable you to automate even the most complicated Linux administration tasks. And just like with my Linux course, each lesson will break down even the most complicated components and concepts into easy to understand lessons and by the end of the course, you'll learn everything that you need to know to use Ansible as part of your daily tool set. And thank you guys so much for checking out my brand new courses. I really appreciate it. Now it's time to dive into the kill command. So let's get started. All right, so let's dive in. What I'll do to start off is show you a very common example of the kill command, and then I'll explain it from there. So what I'll do is type kill dash nine, and I want to send signal number nine to a particular process, and I'll target process ID 45622. Now, I just made that number up. That's not actually a process ID on my system. I'll get to checking that later, but what I wanted to do is just cover this command right here as it is, and then we'll elaborate further. So we have the kill command. As I mentioned earlier, the kill command allows us to send a signal to a process. In this case, I'm sending signal number nine to a process, and the process I'm sending that to is 45622. That's the process identifier or the PID. Now, as you may or may not know, PIDs or process IDs are assigned to everything running on a Linux system. Every process will have a unique identifier. So for example, if I type the PS command right here, I'll just give it some options. And we see a bunch of processes that are running on my system. Now, the individual processes that I'm running doesn't really matter, but what we do want to pay attention to right here is the process ID. At this point in the video, we just need to know what it is. We don't have to memorize anything, and process IDs change all the time anyway, so you can't memorize these. But what I'm doing is just showing you the fact that we have a different process ID per process. It's the second column here, so when I scroll down, you'll see that I have quite a few. So when we have a command like this, we need to know what the process identifier is of the process that we want to terminate. Otherwise, we might terminate the wrong thing and that would not be good. Now, what I'm going to do is bring up a very random application. It really doesn't matter which one we use. I'm just going to use GVim.
And this is essentially a GUI version of Vim. But again, it doesn't matter what application we're running. You could run Firefox for all I care. We just need to run something. Now what we could do is find the PID of that application. Let's just pretend like GVim is just unresponsive and I can't close it or something. What I'm going to do is attempt to close it with a kill command. But first I need to know the process ID. And to find that out, I'm going to throw another command at you, the PID of command. And what I want to do is return the PID of GVim. So right here, I have the process ID. Now as an alternative, what I could have done is simply grep for it with a command like PS aux, but that's also giving us two lines of output when it's only running once. The grep itself is shown as a second line, but the PID of command is very useful because if all you wanted to know was the PID of an application, that's a great way to find it. So now we know that 9585 is the process ID. So what I'm going to do is just grab this window here. Just make sure that it's visible. And what I'm going to do is attempt to terminate that application. Now I'm going to go over the signals later. So don't worry so much about the dash nine. But what we want to do is target the process ID for the process or application that we're trying to close, which in my case is this one right here. So I'll press enter and notice how the application went away immediately. It's gone. So when we type the pit of command again, I'll just recall it. It returns nothing because GVim is not running. We just saw it go away anyway. So I was able to terminate that particular application with the kill command. I think the most confusing part of the kill command is the name of the command itself. It's literally called the kill command. So you would probably think that its only goal is to kill things, but that's just not the case. Like I mentioned a few times now, it sends a signal to a process. So what I'm going to do right now is show you some of the signals that we can send a process. Now here I have a few of the signals on the screen right now. Now I don't have all of them on the screen, but there's some of them that I wanted to cover first before I cover any other ones. And these four right here are going to be the ones that I want to start with. Now we've already looked at signal number nine, that's sig kill. So as you know, that's going to kill a process. Now what you might not know is that kill dash nine, basically sending signal nine to a process, that's a last resort. We really don't want to do that unless we absolutely have to. And the reason for this is because if we send signal nine to a process, it's going to kill that process no matter what. And sure, closing the process might be exactly what you want, but when it closes a process in this way, it has no chance to free up resources that it might've been using. So you might have some odd behavior if you were to do this, but sometimes it's just the only way. You try to close it, it doesn't close, you've tried everything, and no matter what, that process just stays running. If that's the case, then kill-9 could be something that you might consider. But before you send signal number nine, I always recommend that you start with signal 15, and that's the default. So if you type the kill command without a signal, then it's going to send signal 15, which is terminate. And what signal 15 will do is cause the application to terminate cleanly if it can. Now, the way that I like to describe the difference if you send signal 15 to an application, you're effectively asking the application, will you please close? It's just a nice way to close the application. On the other hand, signal nine is a lot more violent. Signal nine will kill the process immediately. It's not gonna ask nicely. It's not gonna check anything. It's literally the equivalent of getting a stick of dynamite and killing the process. And that's why it's a last resort. A lot of times processes will have a cleanup procedure that they execute when they close. However, when you use signal nine, the process won't even get a chance to do that. Now signal number two is interrupt, and that's essentially the same as holding control and pressing C to close out of something. Probably not something you're going to use a lot, but it is something that you might need every now and then. When it comes to signal number one, that's going to be hang up or HUP for short that's going to cause a process to reread its configuration file. Now, normally the right way to have a process reread its configuration file is to use whatever built-in command with that process exists for that purpose. For example, if you're running Apache, maybe you could run something like systemctl reload Apache rather than restart Apache. 
reload reloads the configuration file, but it doesn't cause the process to stop. Sorry to interrupt my own video, but I just wanted to let you know that I appreciate each and every single one of you, and I love creating Linux-related content for you guys. But unfortunately, producing high-quality Linux content like this isn't cheap. But if you want to help me make even more content for you guys, then consider supporting Learn Linux TV. And a great way to do that is to check out the official shop for Learn Linux TV, which was just recently updated. Inside the shop, you'll find distro-themed shirts, bags, drinkware, and more. And there's some other surprises there as well. For example, I've just introduced a mouse pad that doubles as a Tmux cheat sheet. How cool is that? So check out the shop at merch.learnlinux.tv, or you could check out the merch shelf right here on YouTube. You could get yourself something really cool and support Linux learning at the same time, so it's a win-win. Anyway, thank you guys so much for your support. I really appreciate it. Now, let's get back to the video. Now, going back to our terminal, and what I'm going to do is give you a list of the signals that you can send a process with the kill command. To retrieve that list, what we'll do is use the kill command actually, and we're going to use option dash uppercase L, just like that. So when I press enter, watch what happens. We see a list of 64 signals that we could send to process. So that's the reason why I'm not going to cover every signal on this list. It would just be a ginormous video, and most of these you're probably not going to use anyway. Now there's something else that I want to make sure that you're aware of. Most of the time, you're going to send a signal to a single process. However, you may not know this, but you can target multiple processes with the kill command. So for example, I'll type kill dash nine, and I'm not going to execute this because I'm going to add random PIDs here. I'm just typing random numbers, but you get the idea. Obviously, none of these are going to exist on my system, but basically I'm just simulating three different PIDs so if I wanted to kill three PIDs by using signal nine, if three PIDs weren't behaving, for example, I could run this command to close each of them all at the same time. Now, as an aside, I really don't think this particular variation is all that useful. In my opinion, if you have multiple misbehaving processes, it's usually a sign of something worse, like maybe even hardware failure or something like that. So if you have more than one frozen process, that could be a bigger problem, but Maybe not, maybe it's not the sign of a bigger problem and you legitimately do have multiple PIDs to close. If that's the case, then you can add multiple PIDs to a single command, just like this. Now, another signal that you can send an application is quit. Now, this is a bit more specific to developers because it's going to create a dump file. However, kill-3 is something that I end up using every now and then, believe it or not. Now I'll just type a process ID just to give you an example, but let's just assume that this process ID belongs to GNOME Shell. GNOME Shell is the desktop portion of the GNOME desktop, and it's basically what runs when you see a user interface powered by GNOME. But I have experienced situations where GNOME is so frozen where its own restart won't work. So basically I just SSH into the affected machine, run this command, and GNOME Shell restarts. So if you weren't aware how to remotely restart GNOME, well, now you are. Now, what I'm going to do is bring up GVim again. I seem to be picking on that one for some reason. And I want to show you another command here. And it's going to serve a similar purpose. What we're going to do is type kill all. And what's cool about this is like a type dash nine, we're going to use the same signals. The signals that I gave you for the kill command are not specific to the kill command, by the way. So dash nine is, you know, universal. So it universally means terminate. And what I'm going to do is type GVim. Now notice that I'm not typing a PID. Sure, I could find the PID for GVim. That works just fine. And if I have the PID, I could use it with the kill command. But with the kill all command, I could use the process name. And immediately we saw that the window closed. Now before I close the video, I'm going to bring up the table that included the list of signals again. And I wanted to bring your attention to the fact that every single one of these begins with SIG. That's known as the SIG or SIG prefix. Now it's just part of the name, that's all it is. But the thing is, we can refer to signals in different ways. We've been using the number in this video so far, but you can actually refer to a signal by its SIG prefix. So for example, I could type kill dash S, I want to send sig kill, and I want to send it against a process, 
just again a random PID as an example. But if I wanted to send signal kill, which you can see above is signal number nine, that's going to do the same thing that kill-9 does, it's just that we have to type more characters. And that's probably why not very many people use this variation. But I wanted you to be aware that referring to a signal by its name is something that you can do. And there you go. In this video, we took a look at the kill command. And while this was a simpler video compared to other ones that I've done, the kill command is important. So definitely write some notes about the kill command. You never know, you might need it. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video.